Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's your boy Gabriel, just another fan TV. Back at you with another video. And today we're going to talk about phase three of the Ravens OTAs. All right. Uh, but before we get into that, I want to say thank you for everybody who's been liking the video, subscribing, commenting. I really appreciate y'all. And continue to do it, man. Let's, let's run the channel up. Uh, like I said in my last video, um, already almost at 70 subscribers. Um, it's a big deal. So I want to thank you guys. Um, and let's, let's just keep uh, having the channel go up and up. All right. But anyway, phase three of Ravens OTAs. Okay. I wanted to start off quickly with uh, John Harbaugh's presser. All right. First of all, Lamar Jackson is expected to be there at mandatory OTAs. Um, that's June 14th to the 16th. He's not here right now. He's not present. None of this should alarm anybody. That's what's to be expected. Now, he missed the first two phases. He wasn't going to show up for phase three. The plan all along to everybody, apparently except for the media, was for Lamar Jackson to show up for mandatory OTAs. All right. So I expect to see him there June 14th. If he's not there, we'll have a different conversation. Okay. Uh, Chuck Clark. John Harbaugh says Chuck Clark is a starter on this team. Now, he also said all the safeties will play. So that, that doesn't mean that Chuck Clark is nailed on to play 75% of the snaps. Um, he'll be rotated in. He says it's okay. We might have to move the green dot around, but Chuck Clark is still viewed as a starter on this team. Which is interesting because Chuck Clark's name has been in trade rumors, cut rumors, to the Giants, to the Eagles, for Darius Slade, for uh, Jalen Rieger, third round pick, fourth round pick. But as of right now... He's a starter for the Baltimore Ravens. Okay, according to John Harbaugh. Uh, Jalen Armand Davis and Pepe Williams, the two rookies that were drafted this year. Uh, one fourth rounder, one sixth rounder. Yeah, yeah. No, they, they might be both fourth rounders. I'm not sure. Yeah, they were both fourth rounders. I'm sorry. But anyway, uh, positive reports on them. That they're playing well and that, um, they're, uh, that they're knowledgeable guys and they're getting accustomed to the league pretty quickly. This is good to hear because the Ravens have their three top corners, obviously. Uh, Kyle Fuller, who's still not there. I'm not sure what's going on with that, but he's still not there. Uh, Marlon Humphrey and uh, obviously Marcus Peters when he comes back from injury. So, Brandon Stevens, Jalen Armand Davis, and Pepe Williams are all guys that are still going to have roles on this team. They're still going to need to be, when there's rotation, they're still going to need to come in and hold that high standard of play. Um, the secondary is really, really good. And these guys can help be contributors as a fourth, fifth quarterback option. So that's good to hear from them. All right. John Harbaugh is now the third guy to say that Nick Boyle is like a completely different player. Um, he said that he's leaner. He, look, he even looks faster. That the guy last year, he just wasn't himself. And Nick Boyle himself has said that he's down um, in weight. Uh, he went. He was at two, in the 270s last year. He's playing at 260s right now. So this is good because the Ravens already have a fullback, tight end, blocker, and Patrick, Patrick Ricard. They don't need Nick Bull to be another blocker. They only need him to be a, a six offensive lineman. He needs to get out and show his value and, and catch the ball. His blocking is great. Awesome. But for him to have a spot, for the Ravens to carry four tight ends, because you still got to count Mike Andrews and the two rookies, for, for Nick Bull to be a fourth tight end, he needs to catch the ball. Blocking is just not enough value for him to be on the team just to do that. All right, so if he's looking slimmer, maybe they'll get out of there and um, catch the ball. Okay, um, so now into the actual what happened on the field. This is phase three of OTAs, and, this, and the uh, the story of the day is the defense was dominant. And this has kind of been the story of OTAs throughout. Now, it's kind of to be expected because the offense needs rhythm. Lamar Jackson's not there. Brad Huntley is new. Anthony Brown is new. Tyler Huntley, yes, this is his, uh, what, second, third year now? But... Sorry, excuse me. He's not the starter. You know what I mean? So, the defense should play better against these kind of quarterbacks. Not taking nothing away from them. I'm glad to hear it because we want to hear them doing that. We want to hear them dominating. Now, who was dominating? Justin Matabike. He apparently he had three tip passes at the line of scrimmage. Uh, t uh, one led to an interception from Marlon Humphrey. And two things from that. Marlon Humphrey getting his hands on the ball is vastly important for the Ravens. It's vastly important for this team as the Ravens need to generate more takeaways. Their number of takeaways last year was far too low, okay? But, Matt all right? This guy is a kind of a, a, a fan favorite, and he hasn't done much on the field just yet, but it's about the potential. He, he works out with Aaron Donald. We see his body build. We see how he, he looks on the field. The Ravens need him to take that leap and be a dominant player, okay? Now... What does that mean? We're talking about pass rush, stopping the run. If 
if you're going to trim Aaron Donald and do all these kind of things, you need to be able to rush the passer. So, and a part of rushing the passer is getting your hands in the passing lane. So that's good to hear. So I'm hoping Matt Mickey continues to ascend because I say this almost every video now. The Ravens need pass rush from whoever can whoever can provide it. And if Matt Mickey is another guy that can provide it, kudos. That's great. All right. Um, UDFA cornerback Denzel Williams caught an interception. Uh, good for him. So Kyle Hamilton. Kyle Hamilton continues to shine. Now, the interesting part about the Kyle Hamilton report is that they're moving him all over the field. That's to be expected. But it's the way he's playing. They're saying that, you know, uh, this is from Ryan Mink, that he's pretty much undercutting passes and making the QBs think twice about where to throw the ball because he's, he's moving so fast across the field. And also that they're lining him up on the edge. That uh, one play he's lined up on the edge, kind of maybe faked the rush and got into the passing lane. And with his height, it's hard to get around him. Now, Mike McDonald is going to continue to use Kyle Hamilton in these, um, I would say, creative ways. That's good for the defense. He's somebody that the, the quarterback on the opposing team is going to have to point out where is 14. Where is 14? Because he could be here. He could be up top. He could be in the box. He could be on a wide. He could be in the slot. That causes confusion for the offense. So if the Ravens are going to do this and Kyle Hamilton can grasp this uh, kind of moving around quickly, he can become an effective, effective, dangerous weapon. All right. Um, let's see. Let's see. Uh, speaking of Pepe Williams, so Pepe Williams uh, playing tight coverage on Rashad Bateman and actually giving Rashad Bateman a little trash talk apparently at the end of it too. Uh, so that's that's the Raven mentality that we in your face, we're going to stop you, then we're going to let you know about it. So Pepe Williams, he got that dog in him. I think he's from South Florida. So that kind of attitude and, and play style is expected. And the Ravens have kind of been lacking a guy who gets to somebody's face outside of, you know, Marcus Peters. They need they need more fire rod guys, more energy guys, man. Come on. This this is Baltimore Ravens. We're talking about Ray Lewis, Terrell Suggs, Ed Reed, dominate you and we let you know we dominated you. All right. So Pepe Waves get back to that kind of claw. That that'd be cool to see. Um all right, so last thing about the defense. Patrick Queen. Patrick Queen is getting better in pass coverage. And as we know as Ravens fans, that's been our big gripe about Patrick Queen, that he drops back and he looks lost. Now, apparently he's getting better. He's moving quicker out there. He's getting more comfortable in the defense. And his teammates are noticing. So that's good for two reasons. The teammates have, His teammates have faith in him. And he has faith in himself as well. Now we get a faster, better Patrick Queen. Uh, I don't know if I can hear that rain outside, but it's pouring. We get a faster, better Patrick Queen than we did before. So that's good. All right, so... In his year three, he said his year in this press area that he had, he said his year three, so you know what time it is. I took that as, hey, there's no more time for, uh, I need this time to adjust. Uh, I'm still learning. It's time to go ball. So we need to see Patrick Queen go ball. I'm ready for it. Um, so on, on offense, all right, a couple things. Uh, Jawan James is practicing. Now, Jawan James obviously signed from the Broncos after they cut him after he got hurt in the offseason. Now, he didn't play all last year. This was, that was the plan. Now, this was the time for him to come back. So he's practicing. And the Ravens need O-line depth. We know that every team needs O-line depth. But we saw what happened to the Ravens last year. So they, they, they especially need it. All right. Um, also, Christian Colon, or Tristan Colon, sorry. Tristan Colon was struggling with uh, snapping the ball. Apparently had a few inverse snaps going over top of some of uh, quarterback's heads, left, right, whatever. But the story is that Tyler Linderbaum, the first-round pick, who's actually going to be a starter at center, had none of those kind of issues. That's good. Because we remember the Buffalo playoff game. Hell, we remember that part of the season, whether it was playing New England or whoever. Uh, ball going over Lamar Jackson's head, left, right. He got to make a one-hand scoop to, to, get, to, to get the ball under center. We remember that. So Tyler Linderbaum being that steady presence, good. Great. We need it. Um... Let's see. Uh, Kohler. Now, I've spent a lot of time talking about Isaiah Likely. But Charlie Kohler is not to be forgotten. This guy is 6'7", 250. In the, um, in, in the kind of same mold of Mark Andrews. I mean, he's, he's taller than Mark Andrews is. But in the, in the same kind of mold. But look, this guy is making t catches in traffic. Getting over top of defenders. And also, he's finding soft spots in the zone. Now, this is a, another guy the Ravens have to use. Okay? They drafted two tight ends. They need to use him. 
And these guys are pass catchers. This isn't your typical, oh, these guys, uh, they block, they're inline tight ends. These guys can split out in the slot and, and do work. So I expect to see if it's three tight end sets, but this is three athletic tight ends. So it's a little different. So seeing this about Polar, this kind of the first report I've really heard about him. I'm, I'm glad because he was drafted and he's going to play. I don't know how big of a role, but he's going to play. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, Rashad Bateman. Rashad Bateman apparently was shining in the two-minute drill. Uh, he had a couple catches, and also he caught the touchdown with about a minute left in the two-minute drill. Now, the two-minute drill is obviously an important aspect of the game, whether it's end of the half or end of the game. You need to be able to effectively get the ball uh, down the field, throwing it mainly, and score the ball. Right Now, the Ravens, um, <laughs> they're expanding the passing game. And they have been since Lamar Jackson has come into the team. So now Lamar Jackson knows he has a guy like Bateman who can get deep, short, mid, do everything like that and be a reliable target. Somebody who can he can go to in clutch moments, that's huge. When when a game is on the line, you want to look at your wide receiver one and say, hey, look, man, this ball is coming to you. Get open. So it's OTAs. I'm a, I'm a, I ain't going to hype it up too much, but let's think about it. Bateman is bar to be wide receiver one. That's a wide receiver one quality. Catching the ball in the clutch. So that's all I'm going to say about that. All right. Um, Shamar Bridges, undrafted free agent, Fort Valley State, uh, HBCU. We keep hearing this guy's name. Now, it just could, it just could be, you know, he's so tall out there. I mean, he's 6'4", 210 pounds, or 207, whatever he is. Um... But either way, he's making plays, apparently. He's using his frame effectively. The Ravens need big guys. They went out and targeted big receivers for a reason. Doug Williams is 6'5". Javon Clark, I think, is like 6'3". Uh, Makai Polk is about 6'3". But Shamar Bridges seems to be the one pulling away from the pack. Every every report of Tays, I've heard the name Shamar Bridges. And that's great for the Ravens because... One or two of these UDFAs are going to make the team, and that's just the reality of it. Whether the Ravens sign a veteran and get the five wide receivers, that six spots probably going to be for the UDFA. Whether they don't sign anybody, then two spots for UDFA. And Shamar Bridges seems to be pulling away from the pack. All right. Um, lastly, lastly today, um, James Prochet, professional Prochet, making plays out there for the Ravens. Apparently, he was busy through all practice, making all kinds of catches and plays like that. And uh, according to Ryan Mink, um, the Ravens beat Ryan, he had to play at a day. Uh, apparently, it was a 30-yard pass or so over the middle of the field. And he went over top of the corner I mentioned earlier, Denzel Williams, and came down with the, pl- came down with the ball and caused a big roar for the offense, right? So, James Prochet is um, he's in line, opportunity, for a big year. If the Ravens keep these four guys how they have right now, James Prochet is in line for, for work. Tyler Wallace, Devin DuVernay, these guys got to step up and make plays. And so far, I'm hearing James Prochet name. Consistent. Now, James Prochet has always dominated in practice. Go look at all the reports last year, the year before that. James Prochet, always, his name always shows up. Now, why the Ravens don't use him in games or... or or sparingly use him in games? I don't know. I, I couldn't answer that question. But all I know is practice reports, James Prochet's name shows up. So anyway, uh, that's the updates from this phase three of OTAs. The next time we, next time the Ravens are in the building, it should be everybody mandatory. So we haven't seen Gus Edwards. I don't think we've seen Calais Campbell. We haven't seen Lamar Jackson. Uh, so all those guys should be there. All right. Um, and that's a sad to see. And hopefully when they do get there, you know, we get those we get those videos on Instagram, Twitter, seeing those guys around to the field. Anyway, it's your boy Gabriel, just another fan TV. I'm out.